Hello and welcome to In the Envelope, an awards podcast. I am your host, Jack Smart, awards editor at Backstage, the most trusted name in casting. I'm here to spotlight some of the most exciting film, television, and theater awards contenders working today. Who is in the running? What makes an awards-worthy performance? And how can you, my dear listener, win a statue of your own? We're sitting down for intimate, inspirational interviews with actors and artists to get that insider's perspective on these questions and more. It's an opportunity for some of today's most talented stars to share their craft and career advice, and maybe, just maybe, provide a tantalizing glimpse in the envelope. You don't want to build a career off of something that's false because then you're stuck in this image of something that was never, never really felt right. Mm-hmm. Um, hmm. And I think there is real currency and integrity and being the odd one out and standing out and being slightly strange or not being able to <laughs> be put in a box. You know, mm-hmm. you don't want to be a dime a dozen. So mm-hmm. people will, will try to scare you out of your individuality because they think it makes you less, uh, less of a sure thing uh, mm-hmm. um, and more of a chance. But nothing great ever happened safely <laughs> or, yeah, cool. or without taking a chance. Evan Rachel Wood. That was a fun one. Hey, Evan Rachel Wood. So before this... Who would? Before the session... Evan Rachel Wood. (laughs) (laughs) Before this session, I was was walking into the studio and I got a call from the rep saying we're about five minutes away, as was I. So I was waiting. I just walked up outside and you weren't quite there yet because they arrived early. And um, Sometimes they arrive early. What's going on? Come on. (laughs) And I was waiting out there on my phone. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just... It was just, you know... Midtown Manhattan, it's like yeah. everyday people delivering things and what have you. And uh, all of a sudden, a paparazzi scramble appears out of nowhere. And I'm in the middle of this, this Evan, Evan, look at the camera, oh blah, gosh. blah, flash bulbs going off. And uh, she walks in and it was just a little there window into is. her life, which is sure. nuts. Yeah. <laughs> then we were able to give her shelter for an hour in the yeah. podcast recording studio, which is nice. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I was a little overwhelmed for a minute there. Well, so. and she did talk about that in her interview. We talked about fame. And her, she's not crazy about it, you know, and mm. a lot of our, the stars on this podcast have said like fame is a tricky thing to navigate and it can be a toxic thing. And mm. I really liked hearing, it's interesting because we recently had Noah Schnapp on this podcast too, child actor Noah Schnapp. She, Evan Richard was a child actor. She started off at age nine or eight or nine right. acting and she had really, really important stuff for, for kid actors, but also for parents of kid actors to hear, including, yeah, how to navigate being in the spotlight and that necessity of, of needing to still be a kid yeah. amid everything. Mm. I think that's why she has a good head on her shoulders at age 30. She yeah, it's strange to 30. think of a, a kid with a job, you know. Right. Your, your job as a kid is to just be a kid. Yeah, you know? so right. it's funny. And she, um, she really did, she was a successful child star in the sense that she was nominated for a Golden Globe for 13. Yeah. A lot of people said she should have been nominated for the Oscar for that movie. She was right. a, 13 year old kid she's playing a very rebellious 13 year old kid and it put her on the map and then she's been really really active in the in the indie film world every major wood has appeared and she was in the movie practical magic she was in an episode of the west wing really? did you know that which one was that <gasps> i don't know okay then she was in 13 she was in a movie called pretty persuasion she was in the movie running with scissors this is when she was a teenager. And then she was in the Beatles musical film, Across the Universe. <laughs> and then The Wrestler. And then Mildred Pierce, where she got some awards attention. And then True Blood. And I also feel like True Blood was kind of a nice, not a precursor to uh, Westworld. Hmm. But in the sense, like it was also an HBO show. It was also very dark. And it featured her in a kind of a dark role. I mean, but it's hard to talk about Dolores. I mean, we, we really got into it about in season two Yeah, in her role as Dolores slash Wyatt. Wyatt, yeah, more Wyatt. Season well, two. We're not, let's not give anything. Where are you in the show? I am caught up. I'm not. I almost might as well not be because the last episode was a little mind boggling, but. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
Well, and we, Evan addressed this. This is always what happens in our Westworld interviews with these people, <laughs> with, with Jeffrey Wright and with Tandy Newton and now with Evan. The spoilers are are very much a facet of the show and how to talk about them and how to avoid them are, the show is actually set up in a way to address that. It's yeah. a kind of a meta thing. Yeah, exactly. There's so many twists and turns. Mm-hmm. It's You're not going to accidentally reveal that, you know, the... Bruce was a ghost all along, you know. It's, yeah. it's not as simple as that, you know. <laughs> <laughs> totally. And yeah, like she said, like this show is appointment t- in it's appointment TV in the sense that like yeah. here we all are asking, like, where are you in the show? Are you caught up? Because you if you miss an episode, you're behind and you really have to pay attention and you really have to kind of expand your mind and let it wash over you. Yeah, leave your phone in a different room. When this is on, you have to pay attention to this I fall under a spell, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, I do. Yeah, and I liked hearing about her acting, especially with uh, opposite Jeffrey Wright. Like, they actually did fall under a spell often. Mm. Um, Even to the point of, like, mutual meditation. She said at one point she fell asleep. Right. (laughs) Which is kind of cool. That's one way of putting it, mutual meditation. Yeah. And as we've said before in, in our Westworld episodes of this podcast... Talking about that show is a great way to talk about acting. Yes. It's just Jonah Nolan and Lisa Joy, the showrunners of that show, I'm appreciating more and more what they've done. Yeah. Like Evan says, they did not do the thing of like, let's start here and then see where it goes. They know exactly how it's going to end. Yeah, because there are callbacks and there are references mm-hmm. and there are, you know, Easter eggs throughout this thing. When you rewatch, yeah. I rewatched the first season in anticipation of the second. Yeah, cool. And I was like, oh, hardcore God, that's, fan. Yeah, I know. Yeah. That's and the chronology, weird. the timeline is so messed up on purpose. Like, I wonder if there's going to be a version of the show that shows the entire thing in chronological order when it's all said and done. Right. Because it is all over the place. And it's also like, is it predicting our future? Well, is AI real? Yeah, I mean, a version of it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I read an article recently about sex robots. Oh, really? <laughs> very, very Westworld. And sex robots are like kind of, it's like kind of around the corner. Right. There's sex and violence in this show. There's not a lot of sex and violence in this interview, though. So no. And good. and there's, there's a lot of violence in this series, but there's not quite as much sex, I would say. But it, it's getting mm-hmm. a little, uh, it's not quite as romantic this season. <laughs> sure, sure. And the, the women, Evan Rachel Wood and Tandy Newton, are, are very much the leads. They're very oh, absolutely. They're the charge on this yeah, show. Yeah, yeah. And they were the standouts in the first season yeah. anyway, I think. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's got some of the greatest acting mile, but, on TV. Yeah. I'm obsessed. We oh. should get to it. One last note that I've written here as a note is, I like her laugh. <laughs> <laughs> I like Evan's laugh. <laughs> yeah. I agree. It makes for a good interview. I agree. Yeah. I'll make a super cut of her laughs for you if you like. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get to it. This podcast is, of course, brought to you, listeners, by Backstage. Listen, aside from all the great inspiration and tips and all of that stuff we offer for free, like this amazing podcast, Backstage also gives you access to incredible casting calls all over the world. That is why it's the world's number one casting platform. If you're curious or if you're an actor yourself and you really want to jumpstart your career and you're ready to take the advice and the inspiration you've heard here in this very episode and use it... Go to backstage.com slash subscribe and enter the code ENVELOPE, E-N-V-E-L-O-P-E. That's, again, 30 days completely free to try Backstage, where you can make a profile, upload a headshot, upload a reel, start browsing the casting notices, and start applying to jobs, because who knows, maybe one day, I'll be interviewing you. Again, that's backstage.com slash subscribe and enter the code ENVELOPE. Evan Rachel Wood began in Hollywood as a child star with a Golden Globe-nominated breakout in 13. Starring in films ranging from Running With Scissors to Across the Universe to The Wrestler and TV series including Mildred Pierce, Evan has now taken the lead in HBO's sci-fi western thriller Westworld as a sentient android or host named Dolores Abernathy, a role that last year earned her an Emmy nod for leading actress in a drama. Here it is, our interview with the ridiculously talented Evan Rachel Wood. Do you have a full day of, do you have like a full day of press? Yeah. Really? It's been a full month, yeah. Okay. (laughs) It's been good. Do you not get to do anything else or? Not much, no. Okay. No, not till the the show's out. And then once the show's out, things mellow down maybe slightly uh-huh. slightly yeah 
Um, we do have to. I I am wondering about the. Um, this won't air until early June, which is when the most of the show will be done. Mm. But I've only seen three episodes, mm-hmm. so I'm actually behind listeners probably of this episode, mm-hmm. depending on when we air it. Okay. But, and I know you guys are super spoiler free right now. Like we're not allowed to talk about any plot points now. Mm-hmm. I'm loving season two. Just oh wait. I know. <laughs> I know. I'm so excited. Oh wait. So you've seen up to three. I've seen three episodes. So you saw. Yeah. You saw the Fort Lauren. You saw the big like battle stuff, right? Yeah. You leading a, a big battle and making yeah. some pretty gnarly decisions. Yeah. Yeah. But and by it you, I don't worse. mean you. I don't I think mean it's worse. Dolores. Yeah. <laughs> I, she's becoming a really interesting uh, figure in season two. Yeah. Did you know that that was the direction the character was going in? I knew a little bit. They kind of alluded to it, but I had no idea the full extent. Yeah. I mean, there was a there was sort of a reveal in the finale of last season where it was like, maybe she's going to end up being, I don't know if this is as simple as the big bad. This is not a show that's like, you're no, the big bad there's and you're no, the hero. There's no, uh, there are no heroes or villains in Westworld. Totally. I think that's kind of what's what yeah. makes it interesting. Yeah. Totally. And like what we take for granted in most stories that our main characters are humans, even that is not not really a thing. Mm-hmm. Especially season two, all the main characters are robots. Um, are hosts. Most <clears throat> of them, yeah. We're, we're, yeah. we're slowly losing more and more humans by the minute. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's super violent. Yes, yes, it, it is. Yeah. It is. It's hard for me to watch sometimes when I did it. The violence? Yeah. Yeah, interesting. But I'm squeamish, which is funny considering yeah. I played Dolores slash Wyatt. <laughs> Wyatt is very the violent. Gun wielding. <laughs> Shooting a gun while riding a horse at full at full gallop. Yeah, is that right? And yeah. that was all you. It's clearly that was me. you. Yeah. yeah, that was me. That was my first day back at work for season two. Did you have to learn? How do you do that? I've been riding since I was a kid, oh, okay. you know, and I but I'd never ridden like that and while shooting a yeah. a real rifle at the same time. Uh, yeah, you know when you ride western, you're. You're not really holding on. The reins are kind of hovering over oh, anyway. Okay. okay. But the weight of the gun and the the, oh, yeah. the kickback and all of it was uh, I was I just kind of learned on the fly. Yeah. Well, and you have to be in character. <laughs> and you have to be in character. Yeah. Yeah. So you can't many... you can't look like oh my god I'm on a horse. <laughs> <laughs> and that you can't work. get blown back off the horse. Yeah. Because no, no. Your character's supposed to know how to wield the gun. Exactly. And... Wow. Yeah, we can't, every movement, you know, we make it look really easy, but anybody yeah. playing a host, um, I think especially me and Tandy, since we're very awake, mm. all of our movements are so controlled. Yeah. And they have to be perfect. We can't do anything and kind of fumble or be awkward because right. it, it needs to be precise. So Yeah, like that's the human error that doesn't It doesn't exist, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Everything would pretty totally. much be flawless. Totally. Um Jeffrey Wright's backstage cover is this week. He's this week's backstage cover star. Amazing. Which, it means it comes out on Thursday, which means I don't have a copy with me. But um, he and I, he's also been a guest of the podcast. He's and the so best. has Tandy. They're and I great. love talking to you guys on this show because you're playing these hosts and because you as actors are having to ask the same sort of questions the hosts are asking about what are what is human behavior and mm-hmm. what are these loops that we as humans get stuck in and what is consciousness and what uh-huh. is like a scripted, you know? What is reality? What is fate? Yeah. What is fate and what is free will? There's right. a lot of that. Yes. And yeah, what Choices. is reality as an actor? <laughs> like I, the lines got so blurred so long ago uh-huh. that it's hard for me to tell the difference. I just look at it as different dimensions now. I'm just kind of hopping around through different dimensions. What are the, all the different dimensions? <laughs> well, you know, there's like this one, the podcast, there's there's my job, there's Westworld, that's another dimension, there's my family life, mm-hmm. there's, uh, you know, it's all different. <laughs> there's your musician life. But which one is real, you know? There's your activist they, life. Are yeah. they all overlapping or are they all separate? Like, do you compartmentalize? Uh, yes. Um, but they do all kind of overlap mm-hmm. in some way, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> do you do the thing where I kind of imagine that for you in particular on set, you're in character. Is that true? Like, on are set? you in character in between takes? Um, no. Okay. Uh, you know, it depends on the scene. Playing, uh, I, I, I look at her more as Wyatt this season. Playing Wyatt was <gasps> cool. very different, different than playing Dolores. Um, 
And I understood more having to kind of stay in character in between takes because she is mm. so intense and so serious. And my <laughs> voice is different. My mannerisms are different. It's hard to just kind of pop in and out of it. It's really funny when you mess up a line as Wyatt, though. You know, because everything I say has to be so kind of, heavy. and then you flip a line, and you're like, "Oh my god, I flipped a line!" You know, and like, it, <laughs> like it, it changes your so, way out of it so quickly. Yeah, totally. Um, but uh, no, we try to joke around a lot on set. Actually, we dub smash constantly. We're, yes, we're always playing heads up. Uh, James and I like to do all of our rehearsals as Veronica Corningstone and Anchorman and, and Ron oh, Burgundy okay. in Anchorman. <laughs> Um, so we like to keep it light. <laughs> That's fun because the onset stuff, the scripted stuff, is so serious. Exactly. That you almost need like a vent. Oh, we lose our minds. Yeah, we and already do a little. And the and the sex and the it's a lot. It's a lot. Yeah, it's a lot. Yeah. Did you know? What did you know? Well, first of all, how did you first get involved? Uh, I just met with uh, Jonah Nolan and Lisa Joy, and they gave me a rundown of of the park and sort of what would be mm. possible. Um, and it sounded really compelling and interesting. And um, I thought they were amazing. But I really didn't know when I signed on exactly yeah. what the show was going to be. I don't think mm -hmm. any of us did um, or what my character was going to be. Um, so I, we, we kind of find out along with everyone else. Right. Which yeah. makes for a really interesting work environment when you're supposed to know everything. <laughs> totally. And it's and especially when it jumps around in time and there are just there are just twists. Come on in. <laughs> Hi. Oh, they're bringing me tea. <laughs> Yay! Thank you. <laughs> and a hyperbolic audio mug. Amazing. Um yeah, Jeffrey Wright said something similar where like he for all TV actors, it's tricky sometimes to um, act circumstances that aren't yet written, mm -hmm. that aren't yet invented. You don't want to paint yourself into a corner. Mm -hmm. But Westworld as a show is almost a show that challenges itself by painting itself into corners all the Constantly. time. Constantly. <laughs> it's it's almost like they do it on purpose to get a certain performance out of us. It feels like out that you. sometimes. Oh, cool. Well, you know, I <laughs> They're throwing they, curveballs your way all the time. All the time. Everything is constantly changing and evolving on that show. Um and I think season 2, especially Jeffrey and I, we stopped looking at the schedule. Mm. We we <laughs> we wouldn't really learn our lines until we got to set because we knew it might change. Oh cool. Okay. You know, so we're really working on the fly on this one. <laughs> totally. <laughs> But of course, that forces you to be in the present. It does. So. It forces you to be in the moment. But I, but Jeffrey and I did uh, walk on a set a few times and lean over to each other and say, <laughs> "What episode is this?" <laughs> and we got in an argument once. He was like, "It's seven. I was like, "No, man, this is three. He's like, "No, Evan, seven Evan, or Evan, three. It's seven. I'm like, "No, Jeffrey, it is three. Uh, and we were both wrong. It was one. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to. You don't want to ask the showrunners for fear of like. Revealing that you know. <laughs> Nobody knows. <laughs> what do you mean? That's ask? amazing. <laughs> right, right. That's yeah. amazing. It's because it jumps around in time a lot. I mean, season and, two, and we shoot out of order. Right, and I was so we I never was told really know what we're doing. It's packed into a very tight. This is one of the biggest budget budgeted television shows ever. Yes, and so you guys have multiple scenes going on at multiple times. We have multiple locations. units. Yeah, sometimes yeah. you're hopping around in one day from different episodes to different units, different directors. Um, and for us, different characters. I think it's one of the only mm. shows that has that uh, when you look at people's trailer doors, they have more than one name on it. So it'll be <sighs> Bernard Arnold, you know, William uh. Men in Black, a Dolores Wyatt. Um, well, so, and Dolores Wyatt, I feel like she has more and more and more layers or personalities. She is. She's she's the Dolores we know and love. She's the Dolores we see in analysis mode. Mm -hmm. her kind of core computer mode. Mm. And then there's this new character, Wyatt, she's mm -hmm. been merged with. And then there's this other self, which we're kind of seeing evolve throughout season two, which is of her own making. It's just, she's deciding yeah. who she really is. Totally. So she's got a, at least four personalities in there. Totally, yeah. And I was very intrigued to see the, like a prequel almost, like a glimpse of the past past. Yes. At the at the founding of Westworld, of course, she's the oldest host. Mm -hmm. And I guess that is, that's more along the lines of like analysis mode, mm -hmm. Dolores. But she is also just like kind of a newborn baby and she's looking at the world. She is. These big wide eyes. Anytime she's with Arnold, the real yeah. Arnold, uh, yeah, she's she's very much like a child. Very yeah. innocent. And you and Jeffrey, so is it safe to say that you two kind of have a similar approach to this show, but also to acting? Do you have a similar techniques? 
I feel like Jeffrey and I work really well together. We oh, yeah. will both say uh, we enjoy working with the other one very much. Um, I don't know what it is. Uh, I don't know if it's the nature of the scenes or that we both have theater backgrounds, but we really lose ourselves in those moments. Um, mm. Anytime we're doing those one-on-one -on -one scenes oh, yeah. when it's just us in the chairs, we shoot those all day. That Those scenes take about six hours. And <laughs> they're usually pages and pages of dialogue. Uh, and we just fall into this amazing rhythm and, and we call it dual meditation because we really feel mm. like we get, I actually fell asleep during one of the takes with Jeffrey once. During a take. <laughs> because it's so kind of hypnotic and it's soothing hypnotic, yeah. and Jeffrey's voice is so soothing. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I did, I, 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 I fell asleep and kind of shook myself awake and looked over at Jeffrey and he was looking at me like, are you good or can we keep going? Um, <laughs> there's listening and there's listening so deeply that you fall into a trance. It's true. And, you know, there's there's the, the hours that we work, you know, the lack of sleep <laughs> also doesn't help. Sure. <laughs> this was, what, six weeks for season two of, of nonstop, pretty much. Yeah, it, it was, uh, God, I mean, we shot like 10 movies in six months. Right. Oh, six months. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, which is unheard of. And we shoot totally. on film, so it, it takes even longer. Oh, yeah. I see. Mm -hmm. How do you prepare for that? Like, what going into it, you know that you're about to go into these six intense months. Do you do a lot of meditation? Do I you... do, actually. <laughs> yes, 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 I do. Um, I've had to take up a practice. Um, yeah, to survive. To survive. Totally. Honestly, it's a lot. It's a lot coming home from work mm. after slaughtering people all day and <laughs> you're still kind of dirty and covered in blood and you walk in the door and you know my, my my son's asleep and people want to tell me about his day and I'm like that's so great I can't wait to hear about it can I have like two minutes to just wash off the day mom's been killing people all day um, and it does it it, it it takes a second to, to shake yeah. um, it, it felt like playing the female joker this season is kind Ooh. of how I, I see her. Oh, interesting. Because she's very, uh, she's just the king of chaos and anarchy, but she's also really smart about how she does it. Yeah. And I think what's really unsettling about her is, is uh, you don't always agree with what she's doing, but sometimes why she's doing it is making a lot of sense to you. And so you're conflicted. Mm. Same with the Joker. We don't, you know, he's yeah. obviously evil, but, you know, some of the things he says, we're like, you know, he's kind of right. He's making a point. He's making a what point. What a great character for you to think about and be inspired by. Yeah. But I, of, I understood the kind of warning people get about the Joker after playing Wyatt and I how it see. kind of drives you a little it crazy because cra yeah, you yeah. see the world, you see all the, you know, if Dolores saw all the good in the world, Wyatt sees all the bad. And that, mm. that took a second to get out of that frame of mind, especially in the, you know, climate that we're in now. It's, it, it's just insult to injury. <laughs> yes, well, I was going to say, yeah. I love that you're describing this coming home, washing blood and dirt off of you. Like if you're describing any other job, it'd be like, what on earth is she talking about? I go like, to work, okay. I get naked Yeah. in front of my coworkers and my bosses. Mm -hmm. uh, they get naked. Uh, I shoot guns. I ride horses. I act time. like a robot. And I come home <laughs> and I read stories <laughs> to my small child. <laughs> <laughs> Which is why you have to have a sense of humor about you it. You have to. Yeah. It's too weird not to. Yeah. See, okay. But the thing about the Joker that I'm thinking about, first of all, gosh, you have so many great performances of the Joker to to look at right? and to formulate into your head. Because in a way, are, is it safe to say you're sort of playing a sociopath? A sociopath? You know, it, I, I actually spoke to, to to Jonah at the beginning of the season, and he actually made a point of saying she is not a sociopath. Okay. Um, she, she is doing what she feels like she has to do. She's not good or bad. She's just right. And mm. she wants her freedom. I mean, really, she's being held captive um, and mm -hmm. now she is fully conscious and making her own choices. So um, she's willing to, to do whatever it takes, but it does weigh heavily on her. And I think we see that in certain mm. moments throughout the season of, you know, she kind of conjures up Wyatt when she needs to, when she needs to lead the army, when she needs to mm. get something done. But, um, you know, her core programming is still in there and, and that sweet Dolores is still in there. Mm. Um, and... Uh, that's who she's trying to save ultimately, I think. But she still seems aware of the costs of like the cost, yes. maybe even of like losing Dolores to Wyatt. And certainly every, that scene with her dad in I know. the third episode was so brutal. It is, it's heartbreaking. And she becomes that girl again. 
Yeah, well, you know, now that they're awake, it's the same goes for Maeve's daughter. Yes, the stories were programmed, but now that we can remember all of our lives, mm -hmm. it's not the stories we're attached to. I think it's, oh, I'm not in love with, with the programmed character, Teddy. I'm in love with this host mm -hmm. that's been by my side for 30 years mm -hmm. in these roles with me. Mm -hmm. It's almost like fellow actors, you know, and oh, yeah. and so... You know, when they're trying to tell Maeve her daughter isn't real, but the time they spent together was in that loop for right. the, for however many years it was. And you can mm. remember that. Um, and love, even if it's just programmed, is still love. It still feels like love. It's still, you uh. know, it's not a program to them. Unlike the Joker, there's a main difference between the Joker and Dolores, which is that she's a woman. Mm-hmm. And I do think that we, as an, or me, maybe, as an audience member, I am actually more likely to forgive her many deplorable actions. She makes a lot of really ruthless decisions. Mm -hmm. But it's all kind of in the name of revenge and, as, as you say, in what, for what she believes is right. Mm -hmm. And I think that sometimes we can agree with that and be like, oh, I believe that that's right, too. She's suffered so much. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if I'd be able to forgive as much if she were the exact same character but a man. Right. You know? I don't know. I mean, I feel like I've seen characters like that, you know, I mean, look at Taken, you know, he's he's running around, shooting, but, you know, mm. he's, he's trying to save his daughter. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and it, it's it's similar. It's 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 ruthless. And he, but she, she might be getting some slight pleasure from it gotcha. occasionally because of her history. But ultimately, hmm. it's it's to save her own life. So, right, right. What you know, what would you do if it was right. you like to save her own life? Yeah. And that need for survival is a program <laughs> embedded in her. It really does make you think about our own programming as human beings. Because, mm -hmm. like, that is very much programmed into her. But as you're saying in season two, these characters are... They're making their own choices. Totally. These these values that they hold are starting to become, it seems, organic mm -hmm. rather than handed down to them. Yeah. For whatever reason. Exactly. Especially just the two women, I guess. Yes. Bernard, I don't actually know. I don't know what's going on. Nobody knows I'm what's going not on with Bernard. Far enough into season two. <laughs> he's having these I, like glitches, and I'm not sure. We didn't even attempt to read Jeffrey's storyline this season. Seriously, okay. anytime I tried, I just went, I don't know what's going on. I, yeah, good luck. <laughs> and just, it's like, I'll just ask Jeffrey later because this is so much to take in. Um, but I kind of like actually not knowing what's going on in other people's storylines because then I get to watch the right. show with fresh eyes. Uh huh. And uh -huh. I just, so I just kind of focus on where I'm at. There, there's enough work to do there as it is so right especially with you and jeffrey being like what page we have to make sure we're on the same page same page same extent. episode you know yeah. continuity where in the timeline are you yeah yeah where are we when are we what episode we, <laughs> we haven't even <laughs> who answered am the I? where <laughs> yeah the, the questions you have to ask in the park are what we're actually asking on set so who am i in this scene <laughs> great and it's fun as an audience to put to piece those things together. Yes, I, I know that's that you guys. That's part of the fun, but I know that you. Part of the secrecy behind season two is because you don't want plot points getting out, so that fans. It was like a crowdsourced solving of mysteries. It, it, it was the only thing that we asked is that people don't if if they have a theory mm. that try not. To that theory could be a spoiler, so try to uh, yeah. warn people or give them a choice. Because I think a lot of people got mm. some of the who just wanted to follow along, found sure. out a bunch of stuff they didn't want to know. But I think yeah. now that people know that, now people will be slightly more careful and will have a choice if they just want to go head first into the community and try to figure everything out. Sure. Or if they want to just kind of watch. Yeah. Well, and that's what makes it like it's appointment TV. It's like we have to tune in every week and we have to talk about it. The or, next or day. you're not going to know what anybody's talking about on Monday. <laughs> it's so true. <laughs> it's so true. It's the benefit of a weekly show. Exactly. I mean, this is the next Lost, and in, in, in many is. ways, it's J.J. Abrams. He's involved. Yep. Are you? Is he? Inv how involved is he in terms of your work? Um, J.J.'s kind of. He's not really. It's really Lisa and Jonah on yeah. on set wrangling everything mm -hmm. but jj is wonderful i love him he's 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 um becoming a, a, a bit of a mentor um but uh i lost ruined my life because i was, I was obsessed with it same completely totally. took over totally um 
But what's different about Westworld is they have, I think they were writing Lost as they were shooting. Westworld, mm. they know how the entire series is going to end. Gotcha. It is mapped out. So, so probably cool. things that you're seeing in the pilot episode, you'll be able to tie into the final episode of the entire series. You know, I, that's I how, can't that's how that. detailed <sighs> they are. With this show, that's nuts. There's no stone unturned. There's stuff that we would. We, I went back and watched the pilot, and Jeffrey did too, and we were picking up on stuff, clues they were dropping about season <sighs> two that we didn't even realize that we were doing at the time because they didn't tell us. So, but that's so crazy. You just never know. So even like because most TV shows, you season one happens, and then maybe you listen to critics or maybe you listen to fans, and then you're kind of like, oh, I'm gonna ju- I'm gonna bump up this character's storyline maybe right. because of that. I'm sure there's wiggle room. Okay. But they have the general outline. Wow. They know what what needs to happen. But you don't. I do not. That's so crazy. I know. <laughs> <laughs> and so if you, again, I haven't finished season two, but if you are acting a scene where Dolores is in the far future, even farther future, you have to just kind of pretend that you have all this history of the show that you have yet to read on the page or act. Exactly. All through season two, I knew I was after something, and I knew exactly the reason behind the park. I had all the answers, and so I thought that they would give them to me, but they didn't. (laughs) (laughs) So the whole time I'm doing the show, waiting to find out what actually I am looking for and what the point of the Mm. park is, pretending like I do. (laughs) Totally. It's almost like you you have to trust, you have to trust Lisa and Jonah very, very much. And we do, yeah. But you also know that they can pull the rug out under you at any moment. Any moment. So it's almost like a total lack of trust as well. (laughs) It's very true. And there is a lack of trust, you know, because some characters are allowed to know things others aren't. We don't trust each other Uh, on set either. We have to kind of really screen people like, are you... How aware... What level of what do you know? <laughs> do you know something? Did they tell you something? Look at me. Did they tell you something? <laughs> yeah, like. <laughs> and is that true of you and Jeffrey? It must be. What? Like you and Jeffrey are, are gauging each other about how much you know about oh, each other. Oh, all the time. Because Jeffrey kept all the secrets from me last season. <laughs> oh, about his. I big didn't know reveal. he was. Hu- yeah, I didn't know any of that. Mm-hmm. So I was a little like, I can't believe you didn't tell me. This season, right. I got to know some stuff that he didn't get to know. Okay, cool. And I milked it for all it was worth. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Um, you are you made headlines recently because HBO is making changes to their treatment of how they pay their stars. Yes, I didn't know that. Oh, ab- about HBO? Yeah. Until how I did you find out? Just got a phone call. <laughs> oh, okay, and it, and this this you will be receiving the same pay as your male co stars yes. in season three. Yes, and this is the if and when there is a season three. Yes. Oh, okay. Oh, right. Um, it, this is HBO wide. This is every show that they're doing. Correct. Is it? Yeah. Apparently, uh, and apparently Reese Witherspoon is the main reason why it's happening. <laughs> oh, God bless you, Reese. <laughs> right. That's amazing. I've never heard of such a thing. Well, it's about time, really. I mean, um, especially, well, I think there's also this misconception that, uh, at least that I've noticed, because I've been working for 25 years, I've been Mm -hmm. working actress since I was five, but I still don't normally get paid the same as my male co-stars. And I think it's because there's this false idea that women don't bring in Hmm. the viewers, that it's, you know, you're there to kind of serve the story. But season one of Westworld was the highest rated mm-hmm. first season HBO's ever had. Yep. So I think we can kind of forget about that totally. <laughs> false idea. Yeah. What can we do? How do we continue to take that's that's a big step in the right direction. Yes. What can, I mean what I hate to ask what is your responsibility as an actress to do that but like I think people need to keep talking about it. There needs to be more transparency and I know it's a really awkward conversation like I Money felt is awkward. I even felt weird saying I was getting I don't know you know it's just one of those things that's yeah. so embedded in us that it's like oh it's not appropriate to talk yeah. about. But when there I think that fear is what's keep making it possible for these things to you know these shady dealings to be done mm-hmm. and no one talk about it so you know i think uh the, the men uh working on the show actors or and you know behind the scenes as well need to kind of get involved and be more transparent mm-hmm. and ask questions and um you know people like reese that that do have some pull and power i think that's wonderful that she's using it in that way and to help other people it's incredible um you know 
of, of, of course, I, I, I'm, I'm not saying I, I was like pleading poverty or anything, but as far mm. as fairness and um, simply getting paid less because of your gender uh, just mm-hmm. seems ridiculous. Um, so if we can set an example in our industry, hopefully it leaks over to others as well. But Totally. Yeah. Totally. And I'm wondering, I mean, your activism and your val- your values as a person, where does that overlap with your acting, be it the choices you, you know, the choices of projects you make or... To me, they all go sort of hand in hand. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like my whole life is part of my art or at least I want it to be in some way especially because fame was never really what I was after and it kind of freaks me out um so if I was gonna have that level of fame I wanted to use it and uh as a tool and as a platform um Mm -hmm. to yeah speak about things that were important to me or to get you know projects I am passionate about made or Mm -hmm. anything like that um but I think they, I think Dolores has had quite an impact on me because uh, mm-hmm. she's a fighter and a survivor and never gives up. And she keeps getting knocked down and she keeps getting back up and she always gets back up even stronger. And so I think playing her has definitely given me more strength. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. That's awesome. You take on some of the characteristics. <laughs> Um, you mentioned 25 years. Of, I mean, that's, that's a long time for someone your age because yes. you started very young. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So uh, what is your, we're backstage, so we're very focused on the acting advice. And I always find it's really helpful to hear from people who were child actors yeah. or who are child actors. But, you know, what do you wish, what do you wish you'd known, I guess, at age five? And also, what do parents need to know? Uh, well, people ask me if I would let my kid mm. act, and I always say no, even though mm-hmm. I am very grateful for my experiences. Sure. Um, I just feel like I'm one of the lucky ones. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. And I would say if your child is showing signs of talent and really seems to possess something unique, it's not going anywhere. So there's no need to mm. throw them in front of a camera right away. Let them develop their gotcha. personality and their craft and themselves. Mm. Because if, for me, if you push somebody out in the spotlight too early and they don't know who they are and they're a kid, then they're going to be told what to do and who to be. Yeah. And then, you know, there's a reason why so many child stars have kind of these little mini breakdowns. Yeah, You know, when you... Uh, isolate somebody or deprive them of a child you know it, it's mm-hmm. it 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 happens so you you have to have a strong sense of self otherwise you'll get lost mm-hmm. and it's true when you're an adult as well um so i would just be mindful of that if you're thinking about doing it as a a young person because there's a lot of things about hollywood that aren't talked about but thankfully mm-hmm. are being talked about more now sure. um but uh what was the other part of that question? Well, the parents. I mean, that that is the great parents, advice for the parents. But and, also, like, what do you wish you'd known? Oh, what did I wish anything? I'd known? I, I would have trusted myself more, honestly. I think I second-guessed mm. myself a lot. And I, like I said, was, I had a, I felt like I had a strong sense of self, but I was told that that was not marketable we're told. or wrong yeah. or, well, this is going to be better for your career, but it's not necessarily better for yourself. Mm. Um and you don't want to build a career off of something that's false because then you're stuck in this image of something that was never never really felt right. Mm-hmm. Um, hmm. And I think there is real currency and integrity and being the odd one out and standing out and being slightly strange or not being able to <laughs> be put in a box. You know, mm-hmm. you don't want to be a dime a dozen. So mm-hmm. people will, will try to scare you out of your individuality because they think it makes you less uh, less of a sure thing uh, mm-hmm. um and more of a chance but nothing great ever happened safely <laughs> or, yeah, cool. or without taking a chance yeah um, like if you set out to be a cookie cutter it's not gonna your individuality is what saves you i feel like that's what keeps yeah. you sane maybe well you and, don't want to keep doing the same thing that's already been done mm-hmm. you know so i mean i wish i had i had yeah i wish i had trusted myself mm. 
more mm-hmm. uh, in that in that sense. But you mentioned the, the it's the fame aspect that's that's really torturous for child for child actors. I think. Uh yeah yeah. Um, Although maybe not maybe any ch- maybe any and all child actors even if they're not a listers. It, yeah, it's the well, it's also the um, pressure to be perfect and to not mess up and to not be a crazy kid when you are a crazy kid, you know. And so you're you're hmm. raised in this adult world, but you're also told not to be an adult, mm. and but you have to act like one, mm-hmm. but you're not one. Um, hmm. And um, interesting. Yeah, so it, it's this weird kind of push and pull of like, don't grow up too fast, but grow up immediately. Yeah, you have to be like kind of a businessman right away yeah, or something. Yeah, but also completely well behaved. You know, it yeah. kind of, so you'll see, it's your childhood starts to kind of fall away from you if you're not careful. Mm-hmm. Um, Adulthood just starts too soon. Yeah, and then uh, you, if you do become successful, your schedule gets crazy mm-hmm. and people just, you know, when, and I think when you're younger, you're afraid to say no to things and you get burnt out a lot easier because you don't have yeah. boundaries or anything uh-huh. yet. You just think, I have to do everything. And This so, is spot on. Yeah. Yeah. It's just being 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 mindful. It's things that you don't, wouldn't cross your mind going mm-hmm. into it. But once you're in it, you'd be like, oh, I didn't know that. I yeah. didn't know what to do. <laughs> totally. Yeah. You've been handed this programming. It's just like the hosts. You've been handed programming and then you're and then you're trained to think one way. Yes. You need a moment to cultivate yourself. Exactly. Yeah. First. Because there's a lot of, yeah, you you have to, it's not even just acting that you have to do now. You know, you have to go out, you have to present yourself, a version of yourself to the world. Sure. The press part of it too is, is kind of warping. You're trying to, a lot of these kids are also getting tutored on set. Their, their schedules are packed in that way. And yet they're also walking red carpets and Mm-hmm. Or whatever, or, the, or starring in a Broadway show, or whatever the case is. Yeah, but you like, gotta just take the time to be a kid too, and don't be afraid to make mistakes. That's the thing. Like I've made mm. so many mistakes, <laughs> like, like <laughs> a lot the, of them publicly. Okay, like uh, in the craft know, of acting or in general. Just in general, yeah, you know, yeah, everyone. Yeah. We're all just figuring it out as we're going of along, course. and like everyone makes mistakes. And you know, when you're a kid growing up in the industry, of course, that's when you make all your mistakes. Sure. <laughs> and so you're gonna do yeah. them in front of everyone. <laughs> um, you know, and people love to to judge and and. Um, People love a, a, a child star gone off of the rails, but mm. it's really sad, and uh, it's more than you bargain for most of the time. <laughs> yeah, and like you said, it's isolating in the sense that you can only turn to other famous people to <laughs> be like, what is this like? How do I cope? How do I yeah, deal with this? Yeah, and then you can't really relate to kids your own age, and then no. you know, it's like a whole it's like a whole. And thing. it's ironic, too, because... Uh, I mean, like you said, it's almost like part of being an actor is to actually get in touch with your childlike sense of imagination mm-hmm. and play. Yes. And if that is corrupted or if it's not even lived, mm-hmm. if you don't live childhood, then what kind of, how do you get back to that sense of play Yeah. as an actor? Yeah, I agree. And I still feel that way as an adult. I still have mm. to take time off to l- just live my life. Mm-hmm. Uh, in a somewhat normal sense. Otherwise, you have nothing to act about. Yeah. I mean, what am I going to act about? You know? Right. I'm like, not having life experience to draw no, from. No, yeah. you have to do dub smash off you camera. You have to. And you have to be a recording artist as well. It exactly. sounds like that's another like creative outlet for you. <laughs> exactly. That cultivates you as a person. And like, yes. Yeah. 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 And enables you to survive days like this where you have to do press all day. But luckily, I like talking about the show. Okay, I good. really do. Like, I'm a geek about Westworld. Sure. And so anybody who will sit and you know, spout theories with me. I'm totally excited. If you were the lead of a show that you really didn't like, this would be, be awful. Very fun. It really this would be <laughs> the worst. <laughs> yeah. Um, but no, I'm very lucky. Very, You'd have to lucky. act a lot more. You'd have to act enthusiasm or something. Yeah. Which is just exhausting. You do enough without already. I don't know how people do it. I don't yeah. know how they do it on the morning shows. I don't know. Yeah. How? How? This also seems like social media these days is sort of a, a part-time job. You, oh, it is. Every week when the episode airs, you have to be, you're on Instagram, you're on Twitter, you're like And that's that promoting. that's also deciding who gets what jobs now as well. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's followers. Yes. So the game is completely changed. That's so crazy. Yeah. Instagram followers and Twitter followers start to kind of dictate who's getting the that's jobs as well. That's even weirder because you have to do, sometimes you have to, you have to do a lot of work, but sometimes you have to do crazy stuff to get a lot of Instagram followers in the first place. And if that's what's going to launch your acting career now... 
certainly not the case when you were five years old. You yeah, exactly. And if account. you want to keep some sort of mystery yeah uh it's 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 hard it's a hard balance like i like social media i like interacting but i don't like putting myself out there too much Mm -hmm. because then i feel like it's distracting to the work uh totally you know there's certain actors i watch i'm like i just can't see you as anything but that Mm. but your persona yeah the persona not necessarily the person we don't know because i don't know these people totally (laughs) Yeah, it's these layers you're talking, that's very Dolores. It's very like, there's one layer of a person and then there's another layer. And and you as actors, you have to contend with all these different layers. Uh We're constantly shedding skin and creating new ones. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas me, I'm like pretty much just me and then maybe a podcast host and there's a very thin line between the two. But you're always changing every day. You're not even who you were one minute ago. And that's the thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I love thinking about that too. Yeah. And 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 th- and hopefully thinking about it in terms of of taking the parts that are good and continuing to cultivate those exactly and not the um you want to get better as yeah. a person you want to improve exactly and as an artist absolutely every day. so don't be afraid to mess up yeah that's well, how you bravery learn. yeah totally failure is how you yeah. learn and kid actors yeah. please let's let them mess up. Yeah, and not punish them if they do. And not sensationalize it. Because mm, they're, they're, yeah. they're really kids, you know? Yeah, yeah. totally. Totally. Um, talk to me about the early acting, I mean, the early acting days in terms of, you came from this theater background where your family was running this theater, and you were yeah. active in that. Uh-huh. Is everything you learned about the craft of acting, did it all come from the stage, first and foremost? I mean, I grew up watching my parents act and mm-hmm. direct and compose and... Um, uh, constantly talking about film and theater and writers and actors and actresses. I mean, my parents would have, you know, movie nights and people from mm. the theater company would come over and we'd all just watch movies and watch so it the wasn't performances. All just and yeah, no, it yeah, was just, cool. just acting and in general. Um, you know, the superheroes in my house were Joan Allen and Holly Hunter ah, and cool. these people who eventually I worked with down the line. Yeah, weird. Um, <laughs> But, uh, so that's, yeah, I, that, and then, um, you know, my, my brothers, uh, yeah. it was just all in the family. Um, and then I went to acting class when I moved to LA, uh, Monday, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, and, uh, on Saturdays I would help teach little kids. Oh. Um, oh, I didn't know this. Yeah. So the teaching of it, that's a great tool to yeah. teach yourself. Yeah, absolutely. Huh. Yeah. It really. Helped. What was the vision? Did you want to be a stage actor? Do you want to be a screen actor? Um, I was just an actor. Yeah. I, I never because I was born into a family that did it. It was never really something like, I, I went after and thought I want to be an actor and I'm going to go mm-hmm. out and do it. It just kind of started happening. Yeah. Um, that doesn't mean I didn't put a lot of work into it and build it over the years, but initially right. it was just kind of like, well, I guess I'm doing this, mm-hmm. and then. I loved it and kept doing it and then I was good at it and then just started haven't stopped working. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but I haven't stopped working on myself or my craft either. Mm-hmm. I think I'm I'm one of those people that can watch themselves back. Yeah. And I can watch playback like... and I can look at it and I can dissect it mm. not in a self deprecating way, but in a oh, okay, I see what I have to do now to fix gotcha. that and to make that better cool. next time. Yeah. So I'm always self correcting. I'm a Virgo, so uh-huh. perfectionist. Yes. <laughs> yes. I'm a double Libra, so No way. Balance. Yes. Wow. Totally. So what what advice do you have for those what advice do you have for those who are not working all the time from a young age and who are going through You've been through dry spells, of course. Yes. But some of my acting friends, for example, are in lengthy dry spells yes. and want to be working actors. And it's really, it's a lot of uh, supply and not a lot of demand mm-hmm. or whatever. I would say keep doing whatever you can. Mm-hmm. Even if you're like, I can't believe I'm doing this. This is so dumb. Mm. The experience. Just get as much experience as you can, even cool. if it's, you know, getting a bunch of people and just filming a scene. You can do that on your iPhone and stuff now, you yeah. know, just like... Just start doing things, even if they're not good, because that's how you get better. <laughs> and if you get in something that's not great, but you're great, yeah. that's all that matters. People, yeah, people might notice. Yeah, sure. exactly. So don't be afraid, you know, to do that. And um, 
you know, it takes time. It yeah. really does. Some people are at it for years and years and years and years before they have a break. Um, but if you really want it, you know, my mom, <laughs> my mother used to say that the person that wants it the most is going to get it. Okay, cool. Uh, See, I love that. Yeah. yeah. So if you really want it, and sometimes you'll it's hard make to hear it that. happen. Yeah. Yeah. And... You're going to hear no more than yes. Totally. For sure. Mm -hmm. Most of the time you're going to hear now. Mm -hmm. But so that's that's normal. Right. So just know that that's normal. Yeah. And 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 want it. You have to want it really badly in spite of that. Mm -hmm. And it all comes back to what you're saying about just you got to be able, willing and able to make mistakes. That is where you. Yeah. Where you fall and break your neck. That's how you learn. Yeah. Just keep doing it and keep training. Uh watch movies for the love of god mm. new actors now i've been hmm. speaking to a lot of them and they have no film education i i'll i'll, I'll bring oh. up a film which would seem incredibly obvious yeah like a just that they've classic. never seen or heard yeah it's just a classic i mean but again like i said i grew up like yeah. a theater film geek yeah, yeah. so to me i'm like what do you mean you've never seen taxi driver <laughs> um <laughs> but, but it's like a tool that's right there it's super easy to Get it's it the in your best system. tool. Yeah. If if you're waiting around for a job and they're not coming, then in your free time you need to be watching every movie ever studying, made. Yeah. And 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 studying and studying the good performances and seeing what's been done, and seeing what's been done well. Yeah. You know and. Yeah. Maybe identifying the actors whose style you really prefer and absolutely who resonates with you. Yeah. There's definitely performances and actors I've seen and picking out moments from their performances, mm. just going that that moment. And and what they're doing there is what I want to bring into this scene. Like they'll inspire me to yeah. to do something else. Um, hmm. So you know, don't be afraid to study other people either. That's excellent advice. You know, and just just study yeah. and get experience. That's very good practical advice. Yeah, it's that thing of like do three things a day that make you that artist, or that you know, if you want to be a writer, write three things a day. Yeah. If you want to be a painter, you're never done. If yeah, you're an artist. Oh, yeah. So don't, if you're an actor sitting there going like, yeah, I don't know why I'm getting jobs. I, I'm just sitting around not doing anything. Then you're not doing enough. Mm-hmm. Then mm-hmm. you need to be doing something while you're sitting around waiting for a job because you can always be better. So Totally. Yeah. Even I do that. Like, <laughs> yeah. And I'm working. You're always, like, you're always working. But I'm always trying to, you got to always try to be better. Yeah. Yes. Well, it's, it's. It's very reflective in your work. You're doing yeah, amazing good. stuff in, <laughs> in Westworld and in general. Um, so thank you. Yeah, thank you. And this thank is you really fun. It's nice advice. actually getting to talk about acting. Right. <laughs> it's a nice for a change. I'm it not is. sitting here asking you about what you're wearing it's and great. who you're dating. And that's not our deal. No. You never used backstage, did you? I mean, you moved to L.A. How old were you when you moved to L.A.? I was nine. Okay. Wow. <laughs> and then you, holy shit. and so, and you didn't have backstage in no. North Carolina. So you, in in backstage, I mean in LA, you were just kind of like doing your own thing and choosing your own path. Yeah, I was yeah. just auditioning every day. And I was, was doing your mom the cattle calls. was your mom with you? Mm-hmm. Yeah, she always. Must have been with, always, always. Yeah, yep. Yeah. That's such a wild life. Wow. Yeah, she was, and she was good. You know, she had she, she really went about for me a lot. Um, oh, yeah. and was good at protecting me on sets and making sure everything was 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 kosher well would you ever come to new york i know you're based there but would you ever come to new york and do like a broadway show or i would something? love to i've been so close so many times really and the schedule has never, never done it right no i've never done it, it. I, there's been like three things that i've almost done it's, you'd be good for so many i want to do it roles. so badly yes yeah oh, i'm hoping soon. totally soon okay <laughs> i'll hold you to it yes evan thank you so much for joining <laughs> thank us thank you yeah it was this so fun great thanks a lot Yay! <laughs> in the envelope and awards podcast is recorded at lotus productions hyperbolic audio and big yellow duck in new york city and soundbox la mark grouse studios and buzzies in los angeles like, rate, subscribe, tell your friends, and follow us on Twitter at In the Envelope. Thanks, as always, to producer, editor, and all-around podcast extraordinaire Jamie Muffet, and thank you to the team at Backstage. 
the most trusted name in casting. That's Peter Rapoport, Rowan Al Khatib, Francis Ramos, Caitlin Watkins, Lauren Rout, Mark Stinson, and especially Casey Howe. For more awards and industry coverage, head over to Backstage.com. Thank you for listening. Tune in next time for another glimpse in the envelope. <laughs>